right, we burnished them. We ran them for about two hours in nothing but soap and water. And uh, there's a description to the soap that we use. There's a link to it in the description if you would like to get it. But we do this between every single stage. Just to, one, clean the barrel, and two, just make sure there's no grit left on the rocks. But as you can see, we've lost volume, as you do when you move along. So we are going to add more ceramic to make up that lost volume. And this is still, this is the polished ceramic, the ceramic that we've had go all the way through polish stage. You can see the uh, rounded edges on it. We decided to use that for this particular stage because it's a little bit finer grit. All right, now we're gonna add three tablespoons of our stage two grit, which I cannot remember what it is. I'll tell you in just a second. Fighting for those three tablespoons, let me tell you. Yeah, I brought a new bag. In there. I just dumped the rest of it. Yeah, at this point. Not much left. No, nah, that'll do it. It might be a little over three tablespoons, so that's fine. And that particular grit is 120... 220. By 220. Silicone carbide. And we're gonna run this for seven days. We might check it again mm -hmm. in like four or five days, but we're gonna run that for seven days on the slowest speed, which is one out of three for the Nat Geo tumbler. All right. We're chasing the sun around a little bit, as you can see. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, though. We have a little bit that we can chase for a second while we show you guys some of the some of the rocks. Right, Puddin'? Like, yeah, Dad, now feed me. Stop oh. pumping the table, goofball. <laughs> Give me treats. All right. Well, she heard that. So let's take a look real quick. Um, just to recap what's been going on, we've gone through phases one and two. Mm -hmm. And then... And then... Dun, 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 no and then. <laughs> no and then. We lost our tumbler. It died on us. And the school buses are showing up, so it's gonna be a little noisy for a second. How but, do we uh, time this We so time this perfectly, Every yeah. day, it's cause the light is good in the late afternoon. Give me two seconds and somebody <laughs> will start up a leaf blower. <laughs> no, that was earlier. Like a gas powered one and not an electric. Don't get me started. Um, no, stop now. Turn back. Yeah, we lost our tumbler, so we had to delay things a little bit. <clears throat> that being said, National Geographic sent us a brand new one. Yay! And we got it within 48 hours, which was awesome. So we've burnished these twice now, between each phase. And now, no, we've only burnished them once, right? Because we only went from stage one to stage two. We're going from stage two to three now. This was so the post two. So the two. second burnish. Okay, we, we just, burnished twice. Yes, you were correct. All right. Another bus. <laughs> <One> second. <laughs> What's funny is there aren't that many kids in, in this little section of the neighborhood. <laughs> so this is going to be part two Oops. of this entire <laughs> video. Don't mind me. If you want to go back and actually watch uh, in order, I'll link them in the description for when we start when the machine dies and we did a little bit more and this is gonna be the video that wraps everything up so we're gonna go into pre-polish today and then we're gonna go into polish with a brand new machine actually so and we really don't like mean one. the brand new National Geographic we no. mean another Mary's machine. birthday present let me see if I can get this in the sunlight oh. Don't blow out your lens. I know. <laughs> can you guys see that? Okay. I don't know if I can see it. That's pretty. But hopefully you can see it. I can see it. Man, that thing is going to be neat. Yes. I have a tendency, because we shoot these videos over, you know, a month or more, to repeat things. So I apologize for that, because I can't remember what I've said and what I haven't. But <laughs> we are tumbling. I know we've said this a thousand times. This is Mary's birthday present, uh, tumble, which means not only did she get the tum the uh, Lotto vibratory tumbler, or vibratory. Yeah. yeah. Is it a tumbler, even though it doesn't tumble? Yeah, 
it just tumbles Vibratory them differently. Tumbler. Yeah. Um, I got her three pounds of rocks, which are red jasper. Uh huh. Do 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 do. Yellow adventurine. Which looks like iron stained quartz to me. It does. <laughs> Here's another example. This is darker and it looks like it has the yellow more all the way through. Let's see if I can get that sunlight on that face there. Wow, that's cool looking. It's like sparkly a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I wasn't sure if the camera was picking it up, but there's sparkle in there. And then we also did red aventurine, which really is more orangey. Yeah, it's like tangerine quartz, really. That's what it kind of looks like. Yeah. And they're all the same hardness. They're actually the same hardness on uh, the Mo scale as quartz, that piece of quartz that I tossed in there, Huge. which is um, seven, anywhere from six to seven. And I know I've mentioned this before in, in previous videos, but you you want to make sure that you're tumbling like hardnesses. Yes. Almost um, everything we do is probably around. Most of the stuff we've tumbled has been between six and seven. There's yeah. been a few pieces of granite, which I think are eight. Mm -hmm. Seven and a half to eight. I could be wrong about that, but that, the, that's the hardest thing we've tumbled. The what was the blah 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 basalted blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> epidotized basalt. Basically, it's epidote. Uh -huh. um, what was the hardness on that? Do you remember? Five and a half, six. Five and a half, six. That stuff looks great when you tumble it. We've been mm -hmm. having a lot of fun with that. All right, we're about to lose our sunlight here, as you can see. It's getting lower. And then there's more of it. <laughs> but I don't think we need to chase around. We're not going to go over every single one of these rocks. Man, some of those, like... I know. That just looks like quartz. Milky mm -hmm. quartz. Mm -hmm. I know it's not, but... Anyway. We are going... We've... Uh, again, we've we've washed these. We've washed all the media. Uh, we're going to go through them with a fine tooth... Toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> For a second. Make sure there's no grit and then we're going to get them into pre-polish hooray so what i mean by going through with a fine tooth toothbrush is see this right here that might be a little bit of grit in there so we just kind of come through and scrub the heck out of those areas even though we might not be able to see grit sometimes we do mm -hmm. and we just kind of go through and look at every single rock every stone that we have that could be grit in there we don't tumble out all of the imperfections that's just something mary and i don't do um we kind of like its character mm -hmm. and we agreed that we kind of like that it would take a little bit longer to do that and i could chip that away mm -hmm. you can see it's actually cracked that would come off pretty easily if i took a a chisel to it which we do have and we have done before but we kind of like it, some of those imperfections. And now that we have a vibratory tumbler, we're going to get even more polished rocks that are, have a little bit more edges to them and things like that versus this, you know, you get a lot of really rounded stuff when you're, when you're working in a, a tumble machine. It's, it takes out every single edge, whereas the vibratory tumbler doesn't do that as much. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean. You want to make sure that you go through each one, make sure there's no real crazy cracks or crevices. Sometimes you'd have to take like a sewing needle to it to make sure you can get all that grit out. And that's another really good reason why you never, never let them dry out completely unless you're 100% sure there's no grit that's going to stick in there and it can contaminate an entire batch. Your polish won't come out as well. You'll get a, like a, not a glossy finish. You'll get a matte finish on things, which nobody wants that. So, <laughs> so yeah, we just, we're just super careful. And that's another reason why we do the burnish every single, uh, between every single phase. And it's just one more way we can make sure there's, there's no grit anywhere on any of these pieces or even some of the ceramic. So I just wanted to include that. We wanted to show you guys this real quick. We actually, we don't go through every single piece of ceramic, <laughs> but if it pops out at us and it looks like there might be a hole and maybe some grit could get stuck up in there, we scrub them, but then we take them completely out, especially if we're going to uh, polish. But we would take these, they're not going into the next round. Mm -mm. 
they're gonna go back in phase one and they'll go in with some other media eventually they'll wear completely down to where they're just little tiny nubs and like super super rounded edges and everything you can even tell that those two pieces aren't the same diameter as some of the newer stuff that's been in there but keep an eye out for that too depending on how crazy you're gonna get with making sure no grit cross contaminates but do watch out for your ceramics just want to show you guys this real quick if you do have a national geographic tumbler the sometimes getting this little bit off is tough because you have to really wedge it down there i just have a little tiny uh, wrench that i use but you can use a quarter all you do is stick it in there and twist and you can pop that right off and then the next thing i, I always see videos of people trying to pull the top off with that don't do that just put the put this little guy back on and it makes it a lot easier just to pull that right out because otherwise you're just going to tear your fingers up on those threads but i thought i'd record that <laughs> all righty what we're adding to now this is our pre-polish and we switch from the silicone carbide to the aluminum oxide for our pre-polish and our polish I remember we spoke about this in the, one of our previous videos, but we learned this from Michigan Rocks. This makes a better polish than sil the silicone and then the carbide that comes with the machine. And the way we understood it was, that's three tablespoons, by the way, for a three pound drum. The way we understood it was the aluminum oxide, when it breaks down and gets smaller and smaller in tiny little pieces, breaks down in little spheres. Whereas the carbide breaks down as little shard, shards, really tiny, so it will polish, but the aluminum oxide breaks down into little spheres and you get a little bit better polish. The only downside to using the aluminum is that if you're disposing of this, like in your driveway or something like that, don't dump any of that in like your yard. It'll kill the grass. But if you have grass in your driveway, like we do in spots, yeah. we use it as a uh, way to kill some of the grass. <laughs> but that's that's what we switch over to. And again, I know we, I'll put this in the video too, in the link, and uh, hopefully it helps you guys out with your with your polish. We don't use the, um, the polish that came with the National Geographic for this stage. So here we go. Again, if you're using the National Geographic tumbler, this is the three pound professional. We only ever tumble at speed one. That's the slowest speed. Now I have this set for nine days just because we're, we are only going for seven, but I always set it for more than what we're actually gonna go for just in case. Um, I don't want it shutting off an hour too early and the rock's just sitting in there. So always go at speed one slowest speed to avoid bruising because these things go quick and then you'll notice we have it sitting on a mat that's folded over twice it keeps it from moving around too much and then start your tumble again slowest speed start your tumble now it's been seven days and this is pre-polish i think i said polish a second here this is pre-polish and the new unit is running great. Now we're gonna rinse them off and take a look. Cool. All right. I'll hear some noise in the background. It is an extremely windy day out here. So you may get some wind over the microphone. One little rock peeking out. that bubble action, that's cool. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. So we take that and we leave a little water in it so the grit doesn't get dry.
Yeah. All right. Nice. You know what I can see? Yeah. Right away, I can see that piece of quartz, striated quartz. Yeah. That is standing Still out. Still super smooth. It's so funny that it's not either of the Aventurine or the Jasper, but it's got the same colors. Yeah. Again, you do that because you do not want them to get dry until you're it's positive that the uh, grit is off of them. And then we'll take them in and we'll rinse them off a little bit more. And we'll look at them and then we'll do our burnish. All right, we are, we are inside because we don't have a lot of direct sunlight right now and the wind is so crazy. So we thought we'd bring them inside and Ooh, look at them. Look at that sparkle in there. You see that? I don't know. Hold on. Yes, you do. It's catching up on the film. I see where it's wet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do yeah, see it. There's That's a little cool. jersey pocket, but it's like underneath. Yeah. See, it's... We need to scrub that pit out. Yes, we do. It's cool looking. Mm -hmm. So this was one week at 500 grit aluminum oxide. Mm -hmm. And so far they look, they look really nice. Do. They feel really good. We're going to dry one off in a second when we know that there's one that doesn't have any <laughs> cracks or grit on it. We'll dry it off and see if it has any kind of this one is good. shine to it at all. So I'll dry that off if you want to. Now we're not expecting a shine, but um, usually at this point, you might be able to get a little bit, especially if once we burnish it, you might see more. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's got like a matte finish on it right now. A bit of a luster is yeah. what I would say. It's definitely shinier than it was, but it's not there yet. Yeah, it's there, but notice. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let me get some water on it. That's what, that's what we want it to look like. And that's what the, the polish will do to it, even when it's dry. But for now, we have that kind of matte finish, mm -hmm. which is fine. That's mm -hmm. what you're kind of expecting out of pre-polish. Here, let me dry that one off. It's got some cracks in it. I might want to take the toothbrush to it right there. I can run my fingernail on it. I don't see any grit, but that doesn't mean it's not there. My hand's wetter, I would. It's right there. Multitasking. Yes. We need to do this with a tripod, I forgot. I forgot we have several tripods now. Yes, we do. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Yeah. Try it's that like out and actually, see what we get. Yeah. That's part of the adventuring. Dry it briefly. Is that the yellow adventuring? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's take a look. Again, it's matte, but it's starting to. It's yeah. smooth. It's matte, but smooth. Right. Whereas before, you could run your finger over it and still feel kind of lumps. And look at those little tiny druzy pockets. Beedy beedies. That's cool looking, yeah. Let's take a look, another look at the Jasper. Or have we done the red adventuring yet? We have not. Ooh, here's a good one. Oh, wow, that one is pretty. Hold mm -hmm. on, let me see if I can get to focus. All right, we'll dry that one. I don't see any cracks or anything on like that. You can see the sparkle yeah. of some of the... A little bit. That's one cool thing about adventuring is it's got those tiny bits of sparkly bits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is highfalutin language, FYI. <laughs> All right. Let's run these through some soap for about an hour, an hour and a half. And then we'll look again. And we'll take a look again. Be right back. Okay, we burnished for about eh, an hour and a half or so. And we are ready to check them out. And most more than likely, move on to the polish stage. And I rinse these. We do such a good job of getting the grit off before we even burnish that I'm not worried about rinsing these in the sink. If we were at all worried about grit going down the uh, drain, I wouldn't dream of doing this inside. But 
We're not that worried. One nice thing about burnishing between the stages is that it does a really good job of cleaning your barrel out, which is very important when you're going between grits, from one grit to the next. So yeah. We also do this in super hot water, especially to make sure that the soap is out and off of them. And my lens fogs up. Ah. Throw these in some water and we'll take a look at them again. So they actually did take on a little bit of a shine. We'll dry one off here so you can see it. Or is that one you, drew, you did uh -huh. already? Yep, right here. So it took on a little bit of a shine. Yeah, it's starting. Just with the burnish. So yeah, not too bad. And then this one, the yellow, mostly not as yellow adventuring anymore. Yeah, that just looks like iron stained quartz to me. <laughs> <laughs> but again, they took on a, it takes on a little bit of a shine after you uh, burnish, but that well, looks pretty good. Yeah, Let's see if I can, can get focused on it. There it goes. See the sparkle up in his corner here. Oh, yeah. See a little bit of jersey or oh, whatever? Nice. Yeah, I'm going to dry it off now. See how it looks dried off. And we can do a comparison. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, getting there. Taking on a little bit. Yeah. So that's good. It's going to be beautiful in polish. Yeah, so we are going to move into polish here. Let me take a look at a few more of these, and then we will go right to polish. Mm -hmm. So we went through and inspected all of them. Mary went through literally with the toothbrush and made sure that there was, you know, no grit or anything hiding and any cracks. And now we're going to move on to our polish stage. Now what we were going to do, Mary got a lotto tumbler for her birthday. Can you pull that out of there real quick? Here, the box. We haven't filmed this yet. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Cool. Mary got a lotto for her birthday. Yay! And what's really nice about these is they, they're, it's a different type of tumble. So it's not a rotary tumbler like that, which just spins. This literally just vibrates really, really quickly. Now, the thing with a lotto tumbler or a vibratory tumbler, you have to mount it to something. Because if you think a rotary tumbler will walk around a bit, <laughs> this thing will walk all over your house. Exhibit A. Chase the children, the pets, whatever. See what it, I'm just shaking it and it yeah. automatically starts trying to go off the counter. So they come pre-mounted, most of them do, on a piece of wood. And what you need to do, um, we're going to look up some instructions, but what we see most people do is they mount this to a cinder block and then they fill the cinder block with concrete just to keep it from moving around. So we're not prepared to use this yet. That being said, with our recent demise of the last tumbler, the National Geographic, they sent us a brand new unit. And with that unit came a brand new drum, which has never been used. Yay. We cleaned it and I took a little marker to it. We marked a P on there for polish. So having that is really, really nice because if you can't designate a drum for polish only, it's really, really tough to go from one stage to the next and make sure that you're not, not cross-contaminating. Not saying you can't do it, we've done it several times, but it's, it's really hard. So we are going to start the, the uh, polish process here. And if we can get this thing mounted in the next few days, we might finish it with this. Not sure. But let's go ahead and we'll uh, walk you guys again through what we do for polish. So real quick, one thing that we do want to talk about is we don't use, and I know we've gone through this on a couple of other videos, but we don't use the Nat Geo uh, polish. We don't use their pre-polish and we don't use their polish. This is silicone carbide. This is aluminum oxide. And we find that the aluminum oxide does a better job at polishing than the silicone carbide does. And on one of the channels we watched, Michigan Rocks, I want to say his name is Rob. Is his name Rob? Yeah. Rob, or Michigan Rocks. He broke it down like this. Silicone carbide, literally when it breaks down into smaller bits, turns into little sharper shards, right? So you have these little blades polishing your rocks, <laughs> which is great. But aluminum monoxide, aluminum no, no, breaks down, it starts as little spheres and breaks down into tinier spheres. That's the way we understood it. 
So you get a little bit better polish when you use aluminum oxide, we find. We did actually purchase some, is it, I think it's cerium, cerium oxide. oxide. Mm -hmm. That used to be the go-to apparently, okay. from the research I did. It's really good at polishing glass. Um, it used to be the go-to polish for rock hounds like us now, but when aluminum oxide made it onto the market, it was so much cheaper to produce than the cerium that now everybody uses this. We did pick this up because we wanted to try it, but for now we're gonna stick with what we know, which is the aluminum oxide. We also marked the internal lid with a P, permanent marker. Not this bit, that bit. The underside of that touches the rocks. So we wanna make sure that it never has. We can tell this is new. <laughs> it's hard to get into. <laughs> never has the wrong uh, lid. grit maybe embedded into that rubber. So we marked that. And we did a really good job cleaning this. You can tell it's never been used. Holy crap, that's awesome looking mm -hmm. <laughs> compared to the other one. So we thought we might have to add a little bit more ceramic um, to the tumbler, but we don't. It's pretty, pretty good. You can see the water's already added right below the surface there. And now we just add three tablespoons of polish. That is another nice thing about the vibratory tumblers. They don't use anywhere near the amount of grit. The rotary tumblers use a ton of grit, comparatively speaking. I can't remember what it is, but that's three tablespoons, and the vibratory tumbler wouldn't even use a third of that. Right. And it does it also in like four days versus seven, so that's the uh, downside to it, to the rotary tumblers. But there we go. So we're all buttoned up. We have our polish in there. We're gonna set this on the tumbler again at the slowest speed. We always use speed one on the National Geographic. And we're gonna run this for seven days and see what happens.